While New Year's is certainly a time for resolutions, it's also an important time to remember those core philosophies that you've tried to make a part of your life, perhaps for some time. Uh, today, the team met to go over some of the core philosophies of our firm, and we wanted to share those with you. Back by popular demand, uh, Brian has <laughs> agreed to join me uh, today. Um, the team got together for four hours uh, today to, to really go back through um, what's changed in markets, what's changed in portfolios. But for all that chain, uh, change, what are those core philosophies that we want to remind ourselves of and you, uh, the client, that drive so much of what we try to do for you here on the investment side at 10 Capital. Any one of these uh, could and maybe someday will be a commentary in and of itself, but we wanted to start with a nice overview again of those big, broad guideposts that we use within our investment philosophy. Uh, and Brian and I are gonna walk you through those uh, today. Brian? So if we dive in, First on our list here is a long-term approach. Now, most people talk about being long-term investors, but the reality is they don't really stick to the core tenets around being long-term. And we really think that's discipline and patience. All different asset classes you know, perform over time, but people get too focused on what's happening in the near term and they don't allow the long-term to play out. And so that's where we think long-term for us means staying disciplined and staying the course and being patient. Yeah. Second one is a fundamental mindset. The word fundamental in this industry has a lot of different uh, possible definitions. For us, it's really making sure we have a framework that we're using to guide our decision making. And so, yeah, that could be understanding historical truths around uh, how markets play out over time. Um, it could be, again, understanding how to construct a great plan, but bringing it back, again, to a defined process to a defined thing that isn't about how we are feeling, uh, but again, what we know to be true given time. Great, and that brings us to number three, which is diversification. Everyone sort of talks about diversification, and you know the obvious benefits of diversification is owning a number of different assets that have different value drivers that you know may work better or worse in different times, but collectively through diversification, we can get good long-term performance with less volatility. But I think the other thing that we talk a lot about in diversification is when we look at an investment, we're gonna make assumptions around what's the potential expected return and you know what are the risks involved. And we know that we don't always get those perfectly right. Diversification saves and he saves us from any potential errors we may make in making future projections. Yeah, key thing I always want to remind people about when it comes to diversification, uh, and I'm sure I did, I'm sure I'm riffing this from someone somewhere, but it doesn't work all the time, but it works over time or given time. And so, if, and we'll we'll definitely do a commentary just on that one. But diversification means you're never going to be exclusively in the number one thing, which can be really frustrating for some people. But it's amazing uh, done correctly over a period of time, how you drift back up near the top uh, if you let it have the time to work. So number four is independence. And this is a critical, critical thing. Again, don't think of these as listed in terms of a hierarchy. Uh, they're all equally on the table. Um, if you can't move objectively, if you can't take your best thoughts, your best possible investment options, uh, tools, and work with them without restriction, you're not gonna bring the best possible result to bear for clients. And so it's one of the things we've prided ourselves, we've certainly talked to you about it before, uh, here at 10 Capital is being independent, being able to bring best of thought, best of idea, best of option uh, to our clients uh, to write the story that's best for you. Great, and so that leads us to tax, tax conscious. Now I think the core piece of this is what really matters long term is net after tax returns, right? And sometimes the tax consequences of your investment decisions aren't always obvious that day, but sort of play out into the, um, you know, have big impacts to long term growth of your portfolio. And so we always need to take in 
tax impacts to the decisions we make. Yeah, net dollars in your pocket at the end of the day. So this could, and certainly here, as relates to investment, but also relate, relates to great planning. Are we moving the things within your accounts? Are we tax loss harvesting? Are we doing Roth conversions? All the different pieces to, at the end of the day, leave the most money in your pocket. And at the end of the day, avoid, avoid unnecessary complexity. So in working with a group that is independent, that has a thoughtful approach to things, it all needs to be able to be communicated to you, the client, in a way that you can understand and have conviction in. Because that conviction, to bring it back around, is what's going to help you stay in something long term to give it the time it needs uh, to be successful. And so it's something we work very hard. We're open to constructive criticism. I don't understand what you're saying. You're using too many acronyms. We want to, uh, both in the investments we use, as well as how we communicate that to you, have it be something that brings clarity, not confusion to you. With that, if there's any of these you'd love us to dive deeper into, please reach out. Uh, but we hope you can use this as we head into the new year uh, to refresh your own mindset around what your investments should be doing for you. Thanks, friends. Thanks. Okay.